What? Damn. You didn't even you didn't yeah. even think you killed me. I got killed around a wall. <laughs> like Alright guys, what is lag switching and how often is it actually used? This is a phrase that I've heard thrown around a lot lately to accuse someone of cheating or hacking and I wanted to provide information on what it actually is and you know whether or not it would help in the games that you're playing. I'm going to try to make this video as quick as possible guys. If you have any questions leave a comment down below and if you want to help out my channel see more content like this make sure to hit that subscribe button as it does help me out so so much but I'll get right into it for you. All right, so what is lag switching? Lag switching is a technique used to try to get an advantage in online games. It's probably been used since early 2000s in competitive online games. The way that it works is you either have a software or a physical lag switch. And what it does is when you press the button, it disconnects your internet for some amount of time between you know a quarter second or five seconds. And then when it reconnects you, um, depending on how the game is set up, it will sometimes give you an advantage. So I'll give you an example of um, how a game would give you an advantage. And this is going to get a little bit technical for a second, guys, but I'll try to make it as simple as possible. So you've probably heard the term ping before, that little number that shows up next to your name, or if you check in the general settings in population one, it tells you a number between usually 20 and 200 uh, that explains what your millisecond delay is. So what that ping is, when you put an input into your uh, index or into your computer, that is how many milliseconds it takes for the server to register the input that you did. So if it's at 20, that means 20 milliseconds from when you do it is when the server can actually register it. And we are limited by the speed of light in this case and internet connection speed. So if you're out in the country, you are going to have higher ping overall because you're not going to be close to the servers. Servers are normally in Chicago, Denver, Texas, places like that that have high volume or high internet traffic. As an aside, I'm not sure if you guys are interested in the competitive side of things, but this is also why playing video games in person or actually having LAN events is so interesting and the meta is generally so different for something like fighting games. It's because there is no ping. You're on the exact same console or they are plugged directly into each other. There is no delay between your actions. So sometimes these games are played completely differently. You'll often see for fighting games, the meta tends to be a lot less campy in person. And the reason for that is online, throwing projectiles from a distance is really easy and sometimes people can't actually react to them due to the lag uh, but in person you have that much more time to react to them you know you're not just dealing with the human reaction time um, added onto the ping you're just dealing with human reaction time at that time and as i said average human reaction time is about 250 milliseconds but there are people with way faster i, I think there's sites online that you can test if you're curious what yours is but online, that's why, you know, shooter games will be played a lot differently. Peeker's advantage isn't really a thing in shooter games. So people are able to play a lot more defensive in shooter games and be a lot more accurate in shooter games. What Peeker's advantage is, guys, is when the attacker peeks around the corner, there is whatever their ping is, so say it's 60, a 60 millisecond delay before the server registers them as actually peeking around the corner. So that means that this player can actually get information around the corner before the server registers them as peeking, and they can actually even see players before the other players can see them. Peeker's advantage uh, online helps the attacker a little bit more, but you'll notice that in competitive, defense is often one of the more favored things uh, in LAN events. And then, as I was saying with fighting games, tends to be a lot less campy just because people are actually able to deal with projectiles. All right, and then the second thing you need to take into account when you're considering whether or not a lag switch would work or whether or not it would be useful in the game you're playing is to actually think about the code of the game itself. So the way that it normally works is PvE or player versus environment games, games where you're fighting monsters, games that aren't against other players are generally client side preferred games or rather they'll favor the client side or whatever happens on the client side more than the server side. So what does that mean? So what that means, and the whole idea behind this is to prevent the most amount of anger as possible. So what this means is if you're fighting a huge monster and you're connected to the internet, say you're playing World of Warcraft, say you're playing a game that you're connecting to these servers in Chicago, wherever the server is, and your Wi-Fi goes out or your internet goes out for five seconds, 20 seconds, whatever the case, 
this client side ping makes sure that that monster doesn't hit you while you're disconnected. And again, this is primarily used as a way to prevent the most amount of anger, uh, to prevent the most amount of frustration, but it is not used really very much in competitive games. So in a game where you're against environment, against monsters, it doesn't want that monster to be able to hit you while you're disconnected. That's not fair to you. You know, be really frustrated to just come back to your character being dead. And now we get to the idea of a lag switch. So the idea behind a lag switch is in a PvP game when you're actually against other players and you're about to get in a fight, the idea is if you disconnect your internet, none of their bullets will be able to hit you and you could either reconnect and shoot them back or you could even shoot them while you're disconnected from the internet and be able to kill them. Now, while this sounds funny or unfair, guys, some games are actually coded like this, and it does come down to which game you're playing about whether or not this will work. Generally, PvP games like Valorant and other games, if you disconnect your internet, will completely freeze you in place, and games like that usually put all of their priority on the server side of things. There are some client side things that it likes to favor, but in terms of bullets hitting you know, where their targets are and where players are on the map, generally it always favors server side things. So if you disconnect your internet, unload at someone, um, and then reconnect your internet, on the server side of things, you're already dead. So by the time you reconnect your internet, you're already, it's just gonna kill you. It's gonna put you in the, you know, the gray screen, whatever that game has for when you're dead. Back in the 2000s, early 2000s, mid 2000s, even 2010, or even certain games that are PVE, like I was saying earlier, a lot of these games put priority on the client side of things. However, now with the way that coders know how to code, people know how to make games, almost all of that is always accounted for and put on the server side of things. Lag switches really don't work very much in PVP games. Again, it will come down to the game and how it's coded, but all of the popular ones that you guys are used to, Valorant, uh, Population 1, all of these other games, lag switching just won't work because of the way that the code in the back end of the game works. And if you want to see exactly whether or not lag switching works in your game, uh, there's a pretty easy way to figure it out. You have a physical lag switch as well, just by removing the internet plug in your PC. So load up into a custom lobby, whatever game you're playing, you know, start shooting at someone, start doing whatever action you want to test, unplug your internet, keep doing it, plug it back in and see, you know, have someone else in the game and just have them tell you what they see. If they see that it looks like you're cheating, uh, it'll obviously look like you're teleporting around a little bit because when your internet uh, pops back in, usually the server has to readjust your position. It'll either snap you back or it'll teleport you to that new location. But even before it does this, guys, you're stuck usually in that one single spot on the server. So if someone's looking at you and shooting at you, you're already dead by the time that you reconnect. Many of these games have additional methods in place to actually check client-side uh, things if people do end up disconnecting. But as I was saying, with competitive games, guys, competitive games are almost always double-checked on the server side to prevent this sort of cheating. This is one of the reasons that playing on low ping or having a lower ping than the opponent can also provide an advantage as well, because your connection is just that much faster, it gives you just that much more of an advantage. So if you are playing on the servers uh, near your country, you know, if you're in North America, playing on North America servers will help, Asia Pacific, uh, Australia region is going to be something else, and then European servers, you're going to probably want to be playing on your region so you have the lowest ping and the game is the least frustrating. I hope this video shed some light on the subject for you guys, maybe got you a little bit more interested in competitive, or even going to in-person events, because they can be really fun. If you guys do play games on the competitive level at all, or are interested at all in that, I do recommend going to some form of in-person event, just so you can truly feel the difference in the amount of ping, and even just feel the meta change. You'll truly see people play a lot differently in person than they do online. Now, if you tend to play games on the more casual level, ping might not mean nearly as much to you as it would to someone like me. Playing at the higher competitive levels, though, something even like 30 or 40 millisecond delay, you can truly feel. Games like Smash Melee that come down to frame-perfect inputs and frame reactions, something like that, like a fighting game like that, being on the lowest ping possible is always the highest priority. I remember even just going to a better internet connection helped me go from gold rank in League of Legends to Diamond, just from being able to react to other people's moves. 
well, there's a quick summary of lag switching for you guys. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. I obviously do not know absolutely everything on this subject. Let me know if you have any questions down below or if this video is helpful, guys. I'll actually be using this technique in a little bit to test it out in Population 1 and let you guys know whether or not it helps in Population 1. I already know whether or not it does, uh, but I'll make a full video for you guys and show the types of testing that I do. Make sure if you want to see that video or if you like this type of content to hit that subscribe button, and I hope to see you all out on the battlefield.